Hey, Chris here from Four Eyes Furniture. And as you know, I really love modern clean lines in the furniture that I design and build. I've even made uh, hey, man. videos about... Dude, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, I'm just, um, I'm making a video for my YouTube channel. Yeah, but I heard you say you were Chris from Four Eyes and you're totally not Chris from Four Eyes. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, but you just can't steal somebody's identity and put out a video saying that you're them. I, I don't know, man. <sighs> Whatever. Never mind. Just leave me alone, please. Well, you got to tell them. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Never mind. Whatever. It's fine. Okay. Yes. So I'm not Chris from Four Eyes, obviously. Um, but I am a huge fan of his um, and his channel and the furniture that he designs, the furniture that he builds, uh, his videos, the way he shoots them. So a while back, I decided to get a copy of the plans for a coffee table that he designed and that he built on his channel. I needed a coffee table for the record room in the house and I saw one that he built and I thought, That'd probably be pretty perfect for the record room. So when I saw that he and Sean from Sean Boyd made this, put together not only a detailed set of plans, but also one of their instructional courses for the table, I jumped on the opportunity to get in on that. And I'm really glad that I did. I can honestly say that in addition to designing and building beautiful furniture and putting out really awesome and creatively shot and edited YouTube videos, he and Sean put together amazing plans and instructional videos for building the furniture they design. The videos in the instructional course were great. They show detailed cut lists, bill of materials lists. Um, they even put little diagrams in there on how to cut your pieces out of rough cut lumber, which is hugely helpful. So like, really, they're great. I can't recommend them enough. Whether you're a beginning woodworker just starting out or even a pretty experienced woodworker, the instructional videos are fantastic and the course is great, laid out great, very detailed, and it really makes building these pieces really, really easy. So with that said, here is a video of me building the coffee table that he designed and that he built on his channel. Here we go. Are you happy now? I told him. <laughs> Dude's weird. So, bad acting aside, I start by milling all of the rough cut lumber, and this stuff was dense. This part of the video is sped up a thousand percent, and it still took several seconds to get through it with this old jig skull. So I switched to the skill saw, which I knew was going to bind on me, but I just went slow. Yep, there it is. Here you can see just how dense the fibers of this wood are. You might have also caught how warped and bowed the longer piece was as well, but no worries though. Since I'll be needing smaller pieces and that bow won't really pose a problem. So I loaded some of the smaller pieces into a quick straight line rip jig I put together with scrap plywood and blocks. And here you can see that I desperately need to build an outfeed table. Alright, so the point of the straight line jig was to get one straight edge on the wood as well as break it down into pieces that were less than six inches wide, which is the capacity of my jointer, which is the next step in the milling process to joint one side dead flat. So once I had one good flat side, I could switch over to the planer to get a parallel flat side on the remaining rough cut surface. And this is before I built my flip cart that now houses both this planer and my oscillating sander. This process was really a bit of a pain in the ass being on the floor and having to switch the dust collection hose over and having to be bent over so much while milling so much wood, but I made it through. And then I ran those smaller pieces through the planer first. So the remaining pieces of lumber are wider than my jointer, but I didn't want to rip them down because I needed a wider panel. So I used the planer sled with shims and hot glue trick. I glued shims underneath the piece to keep it from rocking and being pushed down by the planer rollers. And this will give me a nice flat surface on that one side that I can then use as a flat reference surface when I remove it from the sled, flip it over and run it through the planer here in just a minute. So again, bending over running all this lumber through the planer was a pain, 
but it was necessary. So I just sucked it up, pressed through, back and forth, bent over. Ugh, that really did suck. So once I had a nice flat surface on one side, I could remove each piece from the sled. Which again was time consuming because I had to pry it off, then I had to take a chisel and get all of the hot glue off the sled and the shims so that I could reuse the shims. It was a whole process. And here are all the pieces. After I had run each of them through the planer using the sled and the shims method, it took me about an hour to run those five pieces through by the time I glued them all to the sled and removed them and chiseled off the glue and remounted a new piece, yada yada yada. Then I could joint one edge on the jointer to get a nice flat reference surface so I could rip each piece down to size on the table saw. Which is what I'm doing here. So here I'm using the in and out method to mark each piece to rerun them through the jointer with the in pieces facing the fence on the jointer and the out pieces facing away from the fence as I run them through again. The point is that the angles will supplement one another in the event the jointer fence is slightly out of square and the result was a panel that had seams that were almost invisible. So the next step was to glue up the panel which is pretty straightforward. I added glue to each seam and then I spread it around with my patented glue spreader and then glued them up without the use of dominoes or biscuits, which are only ever really used to help with alignment. And I was pretty confident on how flat these pieces were, so I didn't use anything to assist with alignment. And let me just say that these Bremen parallel clamps from Harbor Freight are really awesome. And they work just fine, at a fraction of the cost of the more expensive Jorgensen or Bessie clamps. So you can't tell me otherwise, as they've worked just fine for multiple glue-ups. So I'll keep using them and buying them eh, for the foreseeable future. So while the panel was set aside to dry, I moved back over to the table saw to start cutting the legs and stretchers down to size. So here's another jig I made by cutting some scrap plywood down and then not moving the fence at all. Then I marked on my workpiece where I wanted to make the cuts and set that line on the plywood edge where I knew the blade would cut. Then I mounted a few blocks since I had to make some repeated cuts for all four legs. Then I used another piece of the same thickness to incorporate this bridge clamp to hold the piece down while I ran that through the table saw. Then I went ahead and cut all four legs. And after I made one cut, all I had to do was loosen the bridge clamp and flip the work piece around and just cut it again. And that's what you're seeing me do here. And what I was left with was four perfectly cut legs. Ah, smooth. 
All right, now you're just petting them. All right, so then I used the fence on my table saw to line up the stretchers so I could mark where to cut the half laps, since that's how I will connect the stretchers to the legs. That will give me a nice face grain or long grain blue surface, which will make a strong joint and a nice flat joint, which also looks really nice too. And I just made sure the legs were perfectly lined up against the fence once I locked it down and uh, then laid the stretcher on top and marked the line where my half lap cut will stop. And I made sure that I had two legs marked the same way and two legs marked the opposite way. Otherwise I'd have two legs that would be cut wrong. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Once I had the legs marked out, I went ahead and switched over to my dado stack to make the half lap cuts. And I could have totally used the existing blade to make the half lap cuts since it is a flat tooth grind blade. But by the time I cut all four legs multiple times to hog away the half lap, I figured, you know, taking the time to set up the dado blade would really just make more sense. And it really doesn't take that much time to set it up. And it makes a nice clean cut that doesn't require more work to chisel out and flatten down. So it was the better choice in my opinion. Alright, so before cutting the half lap, I laid the stretcher on the table saw top and laid the legs next to it to mark the depth of the half lap. Being sure, of course, to mark the part of the leg that I wanted to cut away so I don't make a mistake and cut them wrong. Don't ask me how I know this. This is important since it is easy to get mixed up with what you have and haven't already cut. Then I cut the half lap, sneaking up on my line. And here I am making that last little cut. Just kissing the line. All right, so this is what I was talking about a minute ago. I have four perfectly cut legs, two one way and two the other way. So then I brought the legs over to the workbench to get them all glued up. And here I am just checking to make sure the half lap is deep enough, but not too deep. And also, how many times have I said half lap so far? I don't know. Anyway. Ah, uh, that's a nice fit. Perfect. And then, it was easy enough. I just glued the stretchers to the legs. Again, using my patented glue spreader. lining up the line on the top, which will be the consistent length of each of the long stretchers. And then I used a 23 gauge pin nailer to just hold the piece in place so it wouldn't slide when I clamped them up. So the next step was to cut the short stretchers between the legs on the end. So I took one leg and I used the angle as a reference so I could set the angle of the blade to the same angle to cut the short stretchers on an angle to form a parallelogram. And once the blade was set, I cut out all four of the short stretchers, just moving the fence over each cut to account for the thickness of the stretcher I was trying to achieve. So I made the first cut 
leaving the blade at the same angle and just moved the fence over the desired width. So it was here that I had a brake trip on my saw stop and you can tell from my reaction that I had no idea what happened at first. <laughs> it took me a few seconds to process what had just happened since I was nowhere near the blade and this was the first of three trips which ultimately ended up to be a faulty arbor assembly but I worked with saw stop over the course of a month to fix and they covered it and worked with me and I couldn't be happier with the process to get the saw back up and running even if it was pretty frustrating during that month troubleshooting the issues so once I got a new brake and blade installed I started cutting down the panels to final dimensions I ripped the long side using my Jessam stock guides which are awesome by the way and I used the crosscut sled to cut the ends since my crosscut sled has about 28 inches of capacity, which is great since I don't have a track saw. And those hold down clamps on the crosscut sled are awesome because they allowed me to cut this longer panel with ease. Then I used the stock miter sled to cut the little overhangs off the half laps on the end of each of the legs. Hmm. Once again, beautiful. Perfectly flush. I love it. All right, so here's trip number two. I was trying to cut the short stretchers to lengthen the brake trip again. The shaking was the sled hitting the tripod and it didn't impact the trip whatsoever. So anyway, I finished cutting the short stretchers on the miter saw instead. So a few days later, and after I changed out yet another break and blade, I kept cutting the panels down to final dimension. Here I used my spline cutting jig with a flat piece of larger scrap plywood screwed to the front to give me more of a surface to clamp the top panel to, which just made a more secure and safe cut possible. This cut was the angle I wanted on the ends that was too steep to cut as a regular miter since the blade only tilts to 45 degrees. Then I prepped the surface by filling in the holes and knots with black hot glue and sanding all the way up to 150 to prep for Rubio. And I really need to get a sander hooked up to dust collection. This made my shop a dusty mess. plugged the holes in the stretchers where I had used screws to fasten them together, flush cut them, and then sanded them down. I used threaded inserts on the underside of the tabletop to secure it to the base. And then I water popped the whole table, every piece, and gave it one last sanding at 150. Then I assembled the table to finish with Rubio Cotton White, which I did off camera because I forgot to film it. And uh, here's the final product. And I think it turned out really well. What do you think? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And always, if you made it this far, thank you, thank you, thank you. And don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe share with your friends.
So once again, I'm not Chris from Four Eyes, but I am Christopher from Oil City Woodworks, and I'm a huge fan of both Chris from Four Eyes and Sean Boyd from Sean Boyd Made This. So the wood I used to make this was some wood that my brother-in-law Scott gave me about seven years ago. He got it free at work, came on some big huge crate that they got, and it's just been sitting around in the shop. And to be honest, I'm not really happy with the color of the table and the way it turned out. If I were to do it again on this piece with this particular set of wood, with this lumber, I probably would have gone with a mint green pre-color from Rubio to kind of mute some of the pink and red tones in the oak before I did the cotton white hard wax oil. So I think now that I have the build down and I'm pretty confident with how to put it all together, I'm probably gonna redo it at some point with walnut and maybe spice it up with a little bit of brass accents somewhere. Maybe instead of wooden plugs, I'll use brass dowels, something like that. Maybe some brass inlay just to make it look a little bit nicer. But the design was great and it fits perfectly in the record room and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And again, a big thank you to Four Eyes Furniture for the course, for the design, for the videos and the way it all came out. And a big thank you to Chris and Sean for continuing to put out fantastic videos and content. And I really love their channel. You can find a link to their channels below. So definitely check them out. Uh, oh, and before you do, don't forget to maybe give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Unless of course you didn't like the video, you thought it was stupid, whatever. Then the best thing you could do is probably give me a thumbs up to tell me just how much you didn't like the video. And that would really get me. So yeah, do that. All right, well, thanks.